Good afternoon, my name is Laura and I work for Banks Vacuum and Sewing Superstore in Novi, Michigan. And I was lucky enough to run into a YouTube the other day on my cell phone and my immediate thought was what an incredible brilliant idea. Um, a lot of you might be deciding on what embroidery machine you want to get if you've never been in the embroidery world and how on earth do you know where to start. Well, this one is just going to start with a machine that is under $1,000. It does a 4x4 field, but it is a complete sewing and embroidery machine combination called the Aurora and has incredible editing capability on built-in lettering to allow you to do monograms. And in addition to that, also has lots of great built-in designs. It also takes a standard USB to be able to download additional designs from any website and easily and simply get them into your machine. So what we're going to be working on today is we're going to work on just creating a little makeup case with a monogram on it. Okay, the video that I saw online the other day was, and I promised her I was going to give her credit, is from a website called She Sews Seams and she has a lot of beginning videos that you can watch. And what she did is she took a padded dish drying mat from the Dollar Tree. So I have a red one here. And cut it in half. What this is going to let us do is I've got something that has padding in it. So I don't really have to worry about how much stabilizer I'm going to have to need or anything like that. And in addition, because it's the solid ones, it even comes with this little cool square grid, so it's going to be really easy for us to figure out how to hoop it and get it going. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my frames, and I'm going to simply just bring in a square frame with a straight stitch. And any of my built-in frames, I can resize and it will adjust the stitch count. And you will understand why I have that in there in a minute. From there, I'm going to hit my Add button. And I'm going to choose a lettering font. Because this is such a fuzzy fabric, I think a bolder lettering font works better than something that's too thin because it'll show up better. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the 01. And if I'm going to start shooting videos, I'm going to go ahead and start my Christmas gifts sooner. So I have two daughters, so I'm going to go ahead and choose my youngest daughter's initials. So her first name is Sarah, her last name starts with R, and her maiden name also started with R. So I've put an SRR. Traditional monograms have the center one for the beginning of their last name, and all I have to do is hit set. Now, right now, if I went to size, I would be sizing all of them, which is not what I want to do. So I'm going to hit that simple reset. And what I want to do is actually change the individual letters. So instead of that, I'm going to hit font edit. I have the ability to separate those three letters. And then if I select that center R, now if I go to size, I am just going to make that center R a little taller, maybe a little wider. Okay, going to do whatever I want with it. Then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select the other R. I'm going to make that size a little bit smaller. And I think I want it a little more so distant from that center R. So simply so touch move because that's what I want to do. Which I love. I'm going to move it a little so bit to the right. The other Hit OK. The then I'm going to go ahead and select the other S. So it the battery touch. And the motor. Oops, so touch to move. To need to touch to size three first. Uh, number two and three. Make that and a little, little bit smaller again. Hit OK. And now I have the two letters slightly smaller on either end 
and the centerpiece a little bit centered. Sometimes you need to adjust your letters so they look proportional for you. Sometimes you don't. It really just depends on what letters you're choosing and what look you like. I have brought up my daughter's initials on the computer with SRR and now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a frame around it. The frame that I've enjoyed using is an oval. So I'm going to set it. Obviously that's going to be too small. So in this case I'm going to go ahead and size it a little bit taller and then as wide as in this case it's going to fit. This is going to let me go ahead and select different items. So if I need to, I can bring that S a little bit further over to the right to get it out of the way. Now, I did go ahead and one of the things you always want to do is when you've gone ahead and done something, always save it into the computer within your machine. So here's the one that I set earlier. Okay, so this is what we're going to do today. So because this has, again, such good stabilization anyways, all I need is two different pieces of stabilizer for my project. A good quality tear away. How do I know it's a tear away? Because it tears. And then in this case, I'm going to put a topper on it, which is called heat and bond topping, so that those stitches are going to form over the plushness of this and not sink down into it. The other thing that I did on this because of it, and this is what I can do with my built-in lettering, is I even have the ability to increase the density down to 90% or up to 120%. So I went ahead and increased these letters to 120%. I've gone ahead and I've hooped my baby lock tear away firm. And then using the markings on the hoop itself, I've drawn a crosshair. Now you're not going to use a dark sharpie marker to cr draw that crosshair. I just did that so I knew it would show up on camera. That's going to let me go ahead and fold it. I'm going to just estimate it maybe hmm, about four inches down. Then I'm going to fold it in half. And now what this lets me do is open this in that quarter, I'm going to bring it over here, bring it over here, and I know I'm centered with my piece right in that hoop that easily. Now obviously since I'm not hooping this, what I ne need to do next is I'm going to simply put a couple pins in to hold it in place to under that tear away. If you don't have a good quality tear away, this could cause your stabilizer to rip too much and this could not work. So you want to have a nice long pin, nice and sharp. If you're having to fight it to go through the fabric, that means your pins are too old. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply slide this on. I already have my bobbin in the machine. I'm going to go ahead and snap my hoop on. And remember when at the beginning I showed you I was bringing in that single straight stitch frame? So what I need to do now is I want to go to that single straight stitch frame, okay, which is the first one up, all right? And even though this is an entry level machine, I can use my frames as a basting stitch. So what this is going to do is it's going to baste my fabric down to my tear away and my heat and gone onto it as well. Now because it's not a true basting stitch, I'm going to go ahead to my needle minus plus and I'm going to move forward one stitch. Because it's a built-in design, it means there's going to be a tie-off at the beginning and the end. Well, I don't want that tie-off, so we're going to go ahead and skip it just by hitting 
10 stitches forward. Okay? And I know how many stitches forward because it's going to show it right up here on stitch 10 of 3,310. Then I'm going to hit OK. As long as my button's green, it's saying go ahead and stitch. It does help if you put thread in your needle, however. I'm not going to worry that I'm a few stitches ahead because, again, this is just the basting stitch that I'm putting everything down with. I'm going to go ahead before it keeps going, slip that hand in, take those two pins out. You want to be very careful when you're putting the topper on that it doesn't go over the foot so it doesn't wrap around the foot to your machine. And when it gets to the end and I know it's going to do that tie off, I just simply stop the machine. I'm going to hit the scissor so now I don't have a tie off at the beginning and the end of my stitch. Because I did stop it before it finished, if I just hit this needle minus plus, and I want to skip ahead to the next color, I'm going to hit the spool as opposed to the stitch number. Which means I'm on color number two of five. I know I'm stitching the right item because here comes my S right inside that box. So it's going to show me what it's going to do. So the nice thing about the Aurora is it's a combination, sewing embroidery machine combination. I know this can sew through leather, can sew through denim without any problem. Um, its only limitation is a 4x4 hoop, but there is a multi-position hoop that also comes with the machine. In addition to that, you also have, when it's in sewing mode, an entire extension table that comes with the machine, complete with measurements down here, which is really, really convenient because then there's more support for your project. So you're going to see me putting that on when we get to the sewing portion of this project. We also have here at Banks Vacuum, if you've never had any stabilizer and you're looking for a good beginning resource for stabilizer, there's a Baby Lock Stabilizer Reference Guide, which comes with a book that explains what all the different stabilizers does. And then also comes with a sample of the stabilizer, and the stabilizer actually has a card marked right on it. In order to order anything that I show you today, all you would have to do is go ahead and call the bank's number that is right here at 248-347-7655. We do ship both items and sewing machines and embroidery machines as well. Don't you just love that in that window it's going to show me what it's going to embroider next? I never have to wonder. Okay, tells me it's finished in embroidering. I'm going to simply hit OK. I'm going to go ahead and snap my hoop off. and slide it out of the machine. Now, the next thing I need to do is two things. I want to go ahead and tear away all this extra stabilizer on the front. This is my heat and gone, so it'll always remain underneath those stitches to cover up the fuzz. And I actually had a customer show me this trick with these rubberized seam rippers on one end. After you pluck the seams, you're supposed to use those to rub the stitches out. Well, I'll tell you what, it's also great just for getting in between all those letters and pulling all that extra stabilizer right off. And I'm going to unhoop my project by just pushing that inner hoop out. I am going to go ahead and keep my hoop somewhere where I know it belongs. That is the one thing I'm really bad at when I get focused on projects. So I'm going to set it into my tray over here. I'm going to go ahead and hit pause. I'm going to rip out those basting stitches around it. And then I'm going to go ahead and show you how I will finish seaming this. 
Okay, so now that my embroidery is complete, I've removed it from the hoop. I've taken all the extra stabilizer off of it, and now I'm ready to go to sewing. So with my machine turned off, I'm going to simply take the embroidery arm off. And now I'm going to reach in here. There's a little screw on the left. And I'm going to take the embroidery foot off of the machine and put on my sewing foot. I now I'm going to go ahead in that extension table that I showed you earlier. Go ahead and get those legs out. And now that that extension table is on, I am ready to turn it back on and sew. There is also the free arm case that goes on the machine here. So if you're not using the extension table, you have this where all of your accessory feet and everything fit in it. So I have I think if I remember correctly, this is 12 inches. I have a 16 inch zipper. I don't care. So how do I buy my zippers? I buy my zippers when they're on sale. I buy my zippers at garage sales. If I'm near a Salva Salvation Army or a thrift store of any kind that might have sewing items in it, I'll go ahead and go on in and see what kind of sewing items that I can pick up for cheap. And I have a tub of zippers that I keep. So because this is a nylon coil, it's not an invisible zipper. If it's too long, I'll be able to cut off the extra. But because it is too long, it's also going to make it very easy to sew with. So this is one of the things that I loved when I saw the original video. What she said was go ahead and she uses clips I use pins in all honesty I meant to bring in my quarter inch double sided wash away tape I could also use that if I had it but I don't so I'm just going to slip a couple pins in and I want that zipper tape to be slightly higher than the foam material and you'll see why here in a minute. So now what I'm going to do is I'm either going to go ahead and put my zipper foot on, or because again it's that foam material, I don't really need to do this. Okay, I'm going to go ahead I'm going to slide so that I can see where the zipper is right here on my foot. I am in a center needle position in this particular case. And I am actually going to go ahead and take my stitch length up to 3.0 because that's what I sew my clothing with. Okay, if I am more comfortable, it is fine to sew from this side, whichever you prefer. I don't remember which way she did it in the video. And I probably don't do it real consistently one way or another either. So, And notice this is the wrong side. So I'm going to start sewing. I definitely want a back stitch. Now because I have white thread, I better sew straight. So I am simply just following my cut edge right along that foot. I am never watching the needle. If I'm watching the needle, then I'm too late. And when I get up close to that zipper head, I can reach under here. Again, with that foot up, and I'm just going to pull that zipper head up and out of the way. I 
I've got that extra high lift if I got a little too close to it, which is exactly what I did. Get that foot back underneath that with the fabric. And I am ready to go. Because I'm using the edge of the foot to follow, it's really easy on these machines to sew straight. Use those automatic scissors for the end of the seam. My thread is trimmed. And now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and sew really close to this edge. Well, because of this is an electronic machine, I have full needle position capability, so I can move my needle all the way to the left in this instance. So again, I'm going to follow zipper tape right along the foot of that machine. Notice I'm also not using a foot control. Foot control does come with the machine. Because I have a little bit of sciatica going on in my hip, I personally find it much easier to sew with a start-stop button and just adjust my speed. But with the Baby Lock electronic computerized machine, your queen, you get to decide what works best for you. And there's my zipper all top stitched down. Now I just have to do the same thing on the other side. I'm now going to go ahead, I'm going to open my zipper, I'm going to put it right sides together, okay, and I'm going to sew right along this finished edge. Again, instead of always having to move the fabric to where we need the seam, once you get used to changing the needle position, you will never know how you lived without it. Now you can hear this pop a little bit. Why is it going to make a little popping noise? It's going to make a little popping noise in all honesty because it's going to go through a lot of thicknesses. You're going to go through the thicknesses. But you can also notice that it's not going to hesitate to go through those thicknesses. Do a back tack at the end. Notice how that fabric still comes forward, even though I am sewing with white thread and red fabric, so you can definitely see well. I'm going to come to the other side. Put my fabric under that foot. Got this right here on the left, that left. So I just push that in. Now that foot is going to do that wrapping up the back. Because I only have part of that that goes under that foot. And it's just simply going to take that fabric forward. Mm. 
let's sew across the bottom next. Because that zipper is opened, we also know we can get this bag right side out together. You will only ever forget to do that probably once. If I flip this right side out right now, poke out all my corners, right? My bag could be done. But I actually really like a bag that'll stand up, so if I'm using it for makeup, or whatever I've got in it. So what I'm going to do, which is a little different from the original video, is instead of cutting a corner out, which I could do, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cheat. I'm not going to do any measuring. As long as I have my needle in the center needle position or left needle position, whatever I want, and I'm just going to use this line that's on my needle plate. I lined up the side seam with the bottom seam. Do that back tack. Thought we heard the noise before. Wait until you hear it as it's going through where all those seams are and everything. And I'm going to sew across that corner. Then personally, sometimes I just simply tack that down. Okay? Or you can also take a pair of scissors and cut it off. Go ahead and trim some of those threads while we're doing that. We're going to repeat it on the other side. The bottom seam. Looking where my corners lined up at. Doing that back tack. Cutting those threads off. Don't have to worry about cutting those off because I'm going to cut that corner off. Now if I put this right side out. You're going to notice my bag will stand up. A couple of bonuses. In a baby lock machine that's electronic, I have a stitch that is, gonna, is supposed to act like a serger stitch. In this, in this particular machine, it's stitch 1-14. When I choose stitch 1-14, it's going to tell me a different foot. In this case, it wants the J foot. I'm still going to take that length up a little bit. And I'm going to look for my G foot. All standard baby lock feet have a letter stamped into them, so you know you've gotten the right foot. And you can see the G right here. Kind of hard on the camera though. I'm not sure what angle to put it at. So if I snap this foot off, this is my standard foot, and I put this foot back on, and this is different from her video guys. What that lets me do is that cut edge 
can let's see, go right along that toe, if you will, of this foot. And it's going to wrap that cut edge, so it's going to give me a pretty nice clean finish. It only has two threads. A serger is usually going to have three threads or four, so it's not going to be exactly like a serger. But do you see where all those threads are wrapped right along that edge? Then I can come over to this other side and repeat the same thing. Last thing I'm going to do, so I'm going to put my regular foot back on. Isn't that easy with these snap on and off feet? Love it. And I personally just go to a 1 03, and I always just sew just the smallest of angles on that edge so I'm going to give a little bit of extra support so somebody doesn't pull that zipper head right off. Go ahead and cut the extra zipper teeth off. So see the fact that I had a 16 inch zipper made it easier to put in. I also happened to have it at home. I know it had a sticker from a store somewhere, but I don't think I bought any zippers at that particular store, which is a couple hours away. So obviously I've managed to pick this up somewhere at a garage sale or a thrift shop. Maybe paid 25 cents for it. I know in the original video, so she sews seams, she uses a bag at the Dollar Tree. Well, that's $1.25. This is sewing on a budget. This is also a great beginning project, getting you comfortable with the embroidery and sewing combination. And what a great use for those, those dish dryer mats. I am hoping that come Christmas time, they're going to have some Christmas prints in their specialty department, and then they might make really nice little gift bags or little Christmas tree stockings or something like that. Can hardly wait to see. Anyways, hope you enjoyed this. Please go ahead and give me some feedback. This is certainly a new world for me to try and do my videos, and happy sewing.